What is up? My name is Citizen Meta One, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I made this possible with the MetaHumans. And so this really cool walk cycle and turn in place animation system is actually from a new asset that was uh, dropped today by Epic Games for free. And if you head over to the Unreal Engine YouTube channel, you'll see this new video today. And it's this cool animation being done with Echo. And they're going to release this full project, I believe, for us to check out. Um, but to start, they've just released the Echo character herself. And that's what I spent my day, really, just kind of like reverse engineering. So if you log on to the Unreal Engine Marketplace, you'll find this banner here, which is how I started today. And you'll see this Windwalker asset um, that is just her. Just this pawn that was from the Valiant of the Ancients demo, I think. I think it's probably the same exact pawn. But anyway, it's her isolated out. And if you download it, it looks like this project. This is what you're going to get. And we can boot it up. I'll switch to uh, controller. And so we have this nice, you know, walking to idle animation and stopping, right? That's pretty nice to have. And then on top of it, you'll see that we have slope warping. So her feet are going to stick to the ground. That's pretty nice. And if even if we go to like a rounded thing like that, looks pretty good. And then she can jump down. Actually, she doesn't jump down in this one. So my question was, you know, can I take this locomotion system essentially and bring this to my metahuman in case I want to live control the face, but still be able to walk around? So the question becomes, how do you get this system to work? with a metahuman and I spent the day digging through this pro project uh, live on Twitch. So if you're watching this video, you know, relatively soon from when I'm posting it, that VOD should still be live on my Twitch channel and I did eventually figure it out. So here we are in a third person blueprint project um, that I'm using and you'll see that I have our metahuman re retargeted to it. I've actually modified the animation blueprint so that he can stand up. That animation uh, is a little bit funny. But you'll see that he is now walking, he goes up the stairs, and the only real issue are that his sandals are going into the ground because we need to add an offset to the uh, slope warping control rig. But you'll see that we have some decent slope warping here. If I hold down the left trigger, he will run. He has a bit of a falling animation that we can go back to walking. And some of the nuances of this system, I'll turn around this way because I think he's just lit better this way, are that there's two types of turn in place. So. Here's idle. If we turn 90 degrees, it's a little turn. But if we turn 180, it's a much bigger turn. So that's a very subtle thing, is that he has animations turning 90 and 180, essentially, in both directions. And they're a little bit different. And it's what gives this uh, a more natural feel than like your average player controller, who just kind of spins in place and their feet don't really track with that state change. So with all of this, we all we also have slope warping. So as soon as I get the foot offset, he can run up and down different surfaces and his feet will stick to it. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm gonna be using this lower body locomotion system for again, my VTuber so that my VTuber can walk around with these animations and have these nice stop and starts while I'll still live control the face and possibly live control the, uh, the upper body as well. But uh, a couple quick things I've learned uh, from reverse engineering this. If you open this up, uh, this blueprint here, for instance, this is the Echo blueprint that I've modified to have a metahuman in it. One of the first things you'll look at is, okay, how do we make this character move? And to my surprise, it is very different. Uh, this is using the new en enhanced input action system for Unreal Engine. So normally you would go into project settings, you would then go to input, and then you would write your inputs in here. You would say that like move forward is W and S and up and down and the joystick. Well, Unreal Engine 5 has got a whole new special system where you could go and you could delete all these out. And you turn it on by going here and switching it to enhanced player input, which is a, which is a plugin that you have to turn on. And I'm not doing a tutorial on it, I'm still learning it. But what you can basically do is you go to the player controller and you get this subsystem and then you set a context, um, map, a mapping context here for this new plugin. And these are kind of like those mappings that you saw up there, but broken out into assets. And then you bring them all together 
into this mapping, right? So you're basically doing what's normally done up here in the project settings. You're doing it at an asset level. And the crazy part about it, I'm sure there's even crazier parts. The crazy part is that you can change this dynamically. So you're just dynamically changing what the inputs do. And when it comes to implementing them, they've got a whole lot more business happening. Normally with this type of thing, you're gonna get something like this, like it got pressed. And if it's an axis, there's an axis value. This has a lot more going on. It has started, ongoing, canceled, triggered, completed, axis value, elapsed time, and triggered seconds. And then there's different types of inputs as well. This is clearly an axis, but there's also Booleans. And I think there's two dimensional axes and it's a whole different system to input, uh, to get input to your character. This one's a little bit more normal, but again, it's a full enhanced input system. So that was one of the new things that's in this demo is this enhanced input system. It's really flexible. And if you read the, the documentation on it, um, it allows you to switch what these things are doing in a very um, packaged and concise way that's pretty nice. However, this threw me through an absolute loop. It took me like two hours to figure out how to get this into like a fresh project that didn't have it. So that's very interesting, something to check out from them. The other thing is on the body blueprint itself that I had to get modified. This is me retargeting all the animations to the metahuman. Uh, something that I'd never heard of before uh, when we're in our base event graph is event blueprint initialize animation. I'm not sure if that existed in four, but it's in five. So this is like your begin play of uh, your blueprint. And what they've done is they've put their cast and you see I've switched out the class here. Uh, you put your cast and the stuff that should really only happen once in this begin play. And so you're not casting on every tick of animation. I know someone who's been doing that on tick. So that's me. So yeah, so don't do that. This is the new way, or maybe it's an old way, but this is the way I'm be doing it now. Then you have your regular update animation stuff. And now there's a post evaluate too. So this pre and this post, just like in code control rig, you can do that kind of stuff. That's much different than how I'd been doing it. Uh, something also that's pretty interesting about this state machine. This is very programmer game devy. So if you're just like straight virtual production, this stuff doesn't really apply to you as much. But when we go to the actual state machine, there's no logic in how it states, how it changes between uh, different states like walk and stuff. You'll see that we have uh, idle walk and jog. All of that's being done here in this kind of like very clever setup. So I, I actually went through each one of these and kind of tried to figure out what it's doing. And what this leaves you with is a pretty simple animation graph. So this this is the, the, the stock, this is like the full graph. This is just the locomotion. It's, it's a little dense, <laughs> these go deeper, but what's basically cool about this is that all of these state changes are triggered by just the enumerator changing. You don't put the logic of like how fast it's going or anything like that. It's all these state changes are just enumerators. And the other aspect of this that's interesting is that there's no blend spaces. So this is basically going from, they have a calculation in the beginning that says like, you know, which way are you starting to turn? And so if you're turning a lot, it plays the 180 or the 90. Um, but when you come to the actual walking animation itself, this is the walk forward, it's actually done with play rate. So they've basically lined up this walking animation to be like a certain speed. And then they could just do what is normally done in a blend space here, but I'm assuming this is a much tighter system for the feet sticking to, to the ground if you're walking really slowly. So it's a very different take, a uh, very interesting take on doing uh, a locomotion state machine. This part got relatively simple that I thought was pretty nice. And then uh, that's your normal state machine. And then they're caching that to this main state machine. And I had to modify this so that I could actually go back to sitting. Um, I don't do any of this stuff here. I think this allows me to like touch the walls and stuff like that procedurally. I haven't used it yet. Um, we have the in-air state machine. So it's pretty straightforward. The main thing is that the on ground is actually referencing this locomotion, which is again from, uh, from this. I don't know what this is doing. This is allowing me to play like, you know, hitting animations. I don't think we do any of that. And then in here is the control rig that's doing the foot tracing. So, uh, I was going to write one of these myself and now I'm going to just use this one. So this is basically taking the input pose and it's putting a bunch of IK controllers down and then it does uh, this functions like a sphere trace. So it's going to trace to the ground and then ask for like the normal of the ground because your foot wants to match that. 
and you're doing that per foot. And then um, this is going to allow the pelvis to be adjusted. I'm not actually sure what these are doing, but then we actually have a full ass, uh, full body IK, Unreal Engine 5 full body IK in here to make this whole thing look pretty smooth. It kind of just like solves the body in like kind of like an aesthetically nice way uh, when you're like adjusting like where the feet are uh, at runtime. So you're runtime procedurally modifying those animations that we had using this. So again, this is just a really nice, um, this is the additive, I guess, uh, control rig that's doing the slope warping. There's a non-additive version. But if you wanted to just like kind of copy and paste a control rig that does slope warping, uh, that's what I wanted to do. Here it is. The one thing we need to modify in this is so that we can add the offset for the shoe height is the last thing I need to get going. So hopefully they can, uh, I'm gonna bug them until they can tell me how to do that. But uh, basically for free, uh, I get this now metahuman uh, animation state machine here with all the anims. All this stuff targets beautifully back to the anime to the metahumans. You do have to do it the right way though. Metahumans are kind of uh, fussy in the way that you have to get that done. But this stuff all works really great even on this uh, you know male tall normal metahuman child skeleton. Uh, the main thing is that if you look at his shoes. Um, the sandals, they just go through the ground because the shoes, when you add them to the metahuman, go down, right? It's not like the skeleton knows that they're there. They just got added. So we need to essentially offset this um, slope warping so that we can have an offset for the shoes. Uh, and then this will be completely usable. So that's just kind of a quick overview of what I was working on today on Twitch. It's not like a full tutorial on it, um, but just showing that it is possible letting people know that that acid did come out and why you might be interested in it. It's really a nice, I mean, literal blueprint to kind of learn the new Unreal Engine 5 way of doing inputs, a new way of thinking about switching between states. There's a lot of logic in this that will help you uh, deal with accelerations and make nice smooth walk transitions that are not so kludgy as some of the other solutions out there. And again, you can just copy and paste this slope warp control rig. That's what I'm doing. We just need some foot offsets. And um, because Echo is so close to being a metahuman, I didn't have to change anything. I think even all the bone names are the same. And if you look at his face, his face is actually playing the animations too, uh, even when he sits down because the control curves are pretty much the same name. Or maybe there's something else even happening. I think it's basically emulating AR kit and then the AR kits being uh, interpreted from the metahuman blueprint. But it was surprisingly simple to actually get all this stuff up and running on a metahuman. And if you want like a base start locomotion system that's not the mannequin that looks kind of crazy on a metahuman, I think uh, this is a really great place to start. So that wraps it up and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.